Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 19. In the last lesson, we did this. We got these ants going around the screen, and I think they look pretty good for the most part, but of course, they're still just white balls and they're just moving around. Eventually, we're going to want to get some pictures of ants. That's next lesson. And we're going to want to add our character, the guy who's going to be hopefully attacking and running from the ants. All right. Now, what's going to happen in here is I'm going to explain everything we've done so far. I'm also going to modify the code slightly. So there's not going to be any big new concepts or any real new material in this. I'm hoping that if you've had any confusion in the last few lessons, I'll clear it up right now. If you understand everything that's been going on so far and you understand why ArrayList has this and how these are working, then go ahead and skip to lesson 20 and you'll be just fine. Uh, you'll probably want to make sure that the small changes I make to the ant class you have already done. Okay. Uh, otherwise, well, let's get started. So in here, when I wanted to draw a bunch of ants, I said, I need to make an array list. And this is my array list. And I did something really odd here. I put this here and this here. And so what does that do? Well, if you remember back to when I created array list the first time, if I create an array list like this, and I can just do this, I'll do the whole thing out equals new array list. This, this array list, I can add anything I want to it. Okay, so I could add a floating point, I could add an int object, I could add a string, I could add a boolean, I could add integer, I can add anything. And for the most part, that's, that's really cool. We can add anything we want, it's very flexible and it, and it works very well. The problem comes when we want to take things back out. So if I use this, this right here would work fine putting ants in, but this down here won't and it won't because when I get the when I use this I'd use a get I I'm actually getting an ant object off my list and then I'm trying to access the members and the methods of it by using the dot operator so in this case I'm trying to access the draw ant method well let's say for instance I put a bunch of integers and floats onto onto this list the, the, the processing compiler doesn't know what I'm putting in there. It doesn't know if I'm putting in a float or an int. So if I put in a bunch of ints or floats and I try to get them out, they're not going to have a draw int method attached to them. So they can't, they can't do that, which means it'll be an illegal call and the program will crash. So we, we, we solve that problem by, one, we use the ArrayList type, and then we create an ArrayList but we assign that array list only a certain type of variable can go into it. So in our case, only ants can go into this array list. It's kind of like what we did before when we made an array, except an array list has some more flexibility to it. So we're, we're actually making an array list that has a type. So this array list has a type ant and only ants can go in this array list. All right. That's what we do here. So I could, I could, make a new list I could maybe say say I want to make a, a list of numbers okay so I make a list of let me use camel case just to go that and I could say this then I would have to put it over here as well and this says make a list an array list of floats and then I can add float point floating point numbers and and take away floating point numbers but I can't add any other number to it all right so this is this is the type of the type array list. All right, I, I hope that makes sense to you. It just kind of limits what can go in to an array list. All right, so let's come down here and, and see what we did in the first place. So I'm gonna actually trace the program out and I'm gonna show you all, all the steps that are going on. In this case, we're, we're gonna count for number of ants. So that means this loop is gonna run 10 times. And each time we do that, we're going to do an ant.add and this says, okay, get ready to put a new thing on the list. And it's just going to go in order from zero, the zero index and up. So I'm going to put on new ants right here. And this new ant says create a new ant object. And you don't have to have this actually appear. I don't have to say uh, ant and then make a variable and then say equals new ant. This line all by itself creates an object. So when you're doing this, you can create objects very fast. And you notice 
this is this is quite different from the last code we did the the balls program and it's it's there's not much in here and it it's pretty nice that way all right uh, I also want to do one more thing I, I want to show you how just like with if statements for loops don't need braces so now I can run this here if I have one statement after the for loop you can put a statement there and it will run and I, I encourage you to please indent here so it still looks like it's a for loop don't do something like this okay so make sure that's indented and this works remember for if statements we did that down where do we do that oh actually we took that out we need to put that in right here so like that you can do it here all right so you can take these these out and it works just fine so what's this line doing then well it creates a new ant object and every time you create an object ant what does it call well it calls the constructor for ant so the constructor runs automatically whenever you create a new ant object and that means when this ant object gets made, it will randomly make an X, randomly make an Y, randomly make a body size, and then randomly create a new direction. Okay, so I want to show you what that looks like. You can imagine that we have an array list, and this is my array list. At index 0, you're going to have all of these variables. And then at index 1, you have all of these variables. And index 2, you have all of these variables. So I'm going to have this up to 10 indexes from 0 to 9. And each one is going to have its own set of variables. It'll own its own x, y, speed x will be something, speed y will be something, and body size. Okay, And so this way, each, each index of the array list is kind of storing, storing all the information for one ant. And you may be wondering, well, you put all the members in here. Why didn't you put the methods in here? Well, that's because these methods, even though each object has access to them, they don't get copied into memory like the members do because none of these methods rely on any specific ant so i can actually keep all of those methods off separately they're just part they're just stored there and then it'll take the information for ant1 and it will use the, the same method in memory so it's not like you copy all of this stuff into into memory for each object you create you're really just copying just these you're just copying the members and that's it okay all right so let's uh let's go in here into ant and look at the constructor again and let's try to fix something up uh one thing that i don't like is i don't like this i wrote it for clarity but i actually i can take this out and instead for x i can say random negative one one and this I can say random negative one one and all that does is it's just a shortcut this is my X this is my Y and that's all I need to do alright so now if I run this nothing's gonna change these are still moving around now one thing I noticed was some of these ants were moving a little fast and so I actually played with this a bit and I think 0 0.8 is eh, 0 0.8 or 0 0.7 is a little bit better speed so I'm gonna set these down to a little bit slower if you want something faster that's fine if you want something slower that's also that's also okay okay um, coming down here all I did was take the braces off this and the rest of this stuff is, is pretty good but I am gonna walk through how this is all working back in the other the other code alright so there's nothing really else I'm gonna change in here uh, I'm just going to I'm gonna leave this as is all right, so after we add all these ants and after the constructor is run, we then come down to draw. And draw does draws a background of zero, so we get a nice black background. And then it loops through here. And what can, how can we make this loop look a little more streamlined? Well, we can take these off. That makes it makes us look like slightly more professional programmers, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, and what we do is we just use the same loop. We loop through number of ants again. Uh, and this time, though, we do this. This is, this is kind of weird. We have two dot operators. So what we're actually doing is we're chaining methods together. So we're chaining them together using this dot. And what it's saying is it says, all right, go to the ant object. All right, good. Now, in 
ants is part is our ants object. Yeah, ants is a, an array list, and it has the method get. And using get, I can get a specific index. I can get i, the ith index of my array, which in this case maybe zero, one, two, up to nine. And now it does this whole thing first. It does all of this, and this gets replaced here within, I'm going to write this like ant object. So this gets replaced with an ant object. So this line becomes this. And now ant objects, they have access to their own things. And in that case, they have access to draw ant. So that's what's happening here. This runs and it gets you an ant object. And then you can use that ant object by using another dot operator and calling this method. I, I think that's pretty clear. The, the other way you could do this alternatively is this. I'm going to put these back in here. And you can say ant temp is equal to okay, ant.get. And then you can just say temp dot draw ant. All right, and that does the same thing. So what it says, it says, get the ant here, store it in a temporary object for ant, and then draw that ant. But this is extra code that we don't really need. So let's go ahead and leave it like this. All right. So I think this looks much better. All right. Uh, so still working. I haven't really changed too much. I, I just uh, changed a few things in here, took off some braces, changed the uh, the P vector, and everything else is going to stay the same right now. And later, maybe you can clear up some of these, some of this white space there. Uh, later, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change a lot of this, and you're going to see this code become it becomes a lot different when we start dealing with actual graphics. All right, so that's really about it. If you're still confused on anything in here, how any of this stuff is working, leave a comment on my website, or you can leave it in the YouTube comments, and I'll try to get back to you uh, as soon as I can. All right, and I look forward to seeing you in, in lesson 20, where we're going to actually draw ants to the screen, and that's going to be a lot more exciting. So see you then.